गुड मॉर्निंग एवरीवन नमस्ते सर मिला दीदी नमस्ते गणेश सर नमस्ते टू एवरीवन वेलकम टू द मॉर्निंग सेशन नमस्ते 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 गणेश जी सभी को नमस्ते वेलकम एंड गुड मॉर्निंग वी कंप्लीटेड एक्सरसाइज वन एंड टू एंड एज वी हैव मेंशन डर्लियर we have requested kanish ji uh, to be here um, for today and tomorrow so that uh, you have an opportunity to interact with him and to ask your questions um, share your thoughts and uh, observations so namaste kanish ji we can start ji Uh, Ganesh sir, uh, my uh, question here is, uh, with the background that I have been um, uh, regularly attending morning sessions and uh, see some progress um, uh, towards my self exploration also. Uh, in last one year, uh, the state of happiness is also enhanced. So my question is. Uh, how can i consistently enhance my competencies uh, towards self exploration uh, specifically with exercise 1 and 2 uh, to the best of my capacities which at present i'm unable to do uh, my expectations uh, from myself are that i could see the self as the earliest Uh, to the its deepest extent, and simultaneously, also uh, takes a step two and step three, or uh, st- exercise two and exercise three also are followed by this. Uh, but what at present the problem which I'm stuck up is that most of the time I'm uh, stuck up in thoughts. Uh, though I'm trying my level best, I can see my feelings also, but. Uh, uh, thoughts are predominant so that's my submission for the resolution please thank you yes in fact you know they uh, in existence everything goes through a process and it takes time what we can do is increase our intensity so what we are describing in the morning session as exercise 1 and exercise 2 is basically trying to understand you know this process so get some uh, idea about the process of development of the consciousness and then we are trying to work on it but any you know process takes time and we have to work on that process and work with some level of intensity and depending upon the intensity the time taken would be less or more but it will happen through the process we cannot hurry we cannot jump only thing is that we can increase our intensity to increase the rate of change so what we are suggesting is that at one time we had no idea about the self about the body about the you know what is happening in the self we were largely focusing on the body the sensation which is related to the body and the physical facility now we have started paying attention to our self this itself you know going attention towards the self itself takes lot of time you know because 
we have our own preconditionings, our own sanskar, that we are the body. And the physical world is the real world. And this world of the self is either not there or it is an illusion or it is something very, you know, sophisticated and I cannot deal with it. So all these preconditionings are there with which we have started. And slowly we have to start, you know, working on this. That it is not just the physical world, it is also the world of consciousness, which is there in existence and which is important. And we need to pay attention to it, we need to see it, we need to understand it. You know, all this new set of understanding, or at least the you know, acceptances. We have to start with that itself takes a lot of time. But it is good that, you know, we have come to accept that, yes, there is material world and there is also the world of consciousness. And I am, I am one of the representative of that world of consciousness. And therefore, I can start paying attention to myself. So this body is important, but the self is also important. And in fact, Slowly we realize that self is more important than the body. So all these things will come, you know, step by step. We cannot jump. Once we have some acceptance for the relationship, for the self, then we start paying attention to it. Otherwise, we don't even pay attention to it. Because if I have this preconditioning that it is not there, it is not there, then we don't think that it is important and therefore we don't pay attention to it. But at least we have crossed that step, right? We have the acceptance that self is there and it is important and therefore we are paying attention to it. Then we, when we started paying attention to the self, And we said, okay, let's look at our imagination. Look at our, our desire, our thought. Initially, it was difficult to see even the thought. But we continuously, you know, we continued working on it. We tried to become aware of our own self. Tried to observe the imagination that is going on in each one of us, then try to see the feelings, the thought, the expectations that we have, which constitutes this imagination. So all that we started working with it. And now slowly I am able to see at least my thought. That is what you are saying, right? That in the present status, I am able to see my thoughts. Okay. And I am not able to go beyond it. Because thoughts are there. On the base of this thought, there are feelings. And these feelings are decided on the basis of our acceptance, our sanskar. And ultimately, all these sanskars are also you know, to be observed by the pure self, by the pure observer. So all these things are there. So we have these thoughts. And be behind that thought, there are feelings. Behind that feeling, there are sanskars. And those sanskars are also to be observed and evaluated by the pure observer. So slowly, we have to start observing these higher and higher activities of the self. But it is good that we are able to see the thought. And we can see that it is something real. We can also see that it is something important. Right? But we cannot deal our problems only at the level of thought. So if we have to deal with the problems, we have to deal with it at a 
higher and higher level of activity of the self. So we have to start observing the feelings. Then we have to start observing the sanskar, the expect acceptances or preconditionings. And then ultimately we have to do all this from the level of pure observer. So we have to be at the level of pure observer. All these higher levels of activity of the self we have to become aware of. So first we have to you know, see that yes, these are there. Then we have to observe them. Then we have to understand, evaluate them. And all this is to be done by the pure observer. So somewhere we have to move to the level of pure observer. And in fact, step one, if you see properly, you would find that step one is essentially taking you to the pure observer. That is the highest activity of the self. So when we are saying be aware, it means be at the level of pure observer. From there, look at your imagination. Look at your feeling, your thought. And then evaluate those feelings, those thoughts, whether they are natural, unnatural, whether they lead to happiness, unhappiness. And while doing all this, don't react. This no reaction is possible only when you are at the level of your observer. If you come down to the level of sanskar, you are preconditioning, you are likely to react. You are likely to react. So if you see this step exercise to your interaction with the body, then you realize that any information I am reading from the body in the form of sensation. I am reading it with my sanskars at the background. I am interpreting this information on the basis of my sanskar. And I am responding or reacting to it on the basis of my sanskar. So my sanskar is playing a significant role in deciding my feeling and my thought. So that is what is happening. So if I'm down at the level of sanskar, I am likely to react. But if I'm at the level of pure observer and I'm observing the lower activities, the activity of imagination, the activity of sanskar, then I can be aware of them. I can look at them. I can evaluate them and not react to them. So basically, step one itself is indirectly trying to take you to the place of high, pure observer, the highest activity of the self. So basically, you have to move there. So if you are intensively working on step one, then you will find that you are at the right place, your highest activity of the self. And if you are there, then once you are there, you are comfortable. And with that comfortability, now you are interacting, interacting with the lower activities of the self. And that interaction is in the form of observing these lower activities and evaluating them. And that's it. So if I continue doing that observation of the lower activity of the self and their evaluation, slowly these lower activities will keep getting purified. So my imagination will get purified and my sanskar will also get purified. So my feelings, my thoughts, my expectations will slowly get purified by, of, of, by way of observing them from the place of your observer and evaluating them.
and then I can look at my sanskar also and I can evaluate the sanskar and then sanskar will also start getting purified. But all this will happen if I am placing myself at the level of pure observer or I am at the level of pure observer. From there, I am looking at this lower activities and evaluating them. And when I am at the level of pure observer, I am in harmony with it. I am in a state of happiness with it. Right. So at the level of pure observer, you are, you are always in harmony. So there is no harm, this harmony is there. So you are anyway comfortable. And with that comfortability, you are observing, you know, this imagination, observing this and scar and evaluating them and all that. So if you look at this, you know, step one is the very central thing. And that is where you have to really work and make sure that you are there all the time, every moment. Right? If you are there, then you are in harmony and in a state of happiness. From there, you can look down, look at your imagination, look at your feeling, your thought, evaluate them, and that's it. They will start getting purified. Similarly, look at your sanskar at this moment, which is active, evaluate it, and that's it. So this is what I have to do, and I can keep doing. And there is no problem. Because I am at the level of pure observer, and I am in a state of harmony and happiness there anyway. So this has to be done with all intensity. This has to be done with all intensity. And my progress will depend upon my intensity on working on what I have described. Uh, thank you, Ganesh sir. Thank you very much. Namaste. And, and it will take time because we are too much tied up to these lower activities of the self. We think that that is the reality and the higher activities are either not there or they are not important. But if we start working at the level in mean, exercise one, step one, with intensity, that will help us to see that, yes, this pure observer is there. And when I am there at, as, as, I mean, at pure observer, then I am in harmony and happiness. And then I can work further, step two, three, four, and then five and six and then ultimately seven. In fact, step two and three is working with the feeling part and the thought part. Step four and five is working with the sanskar part, you know, your preconditioning part. And step six and seven is basically setting them in order. But yeah, I have a small uh, required a small clarification regarding this. Uh, all units are being in the space. All units are energized uh, in the uh, energized by the space. Am I correct, Yeah. 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 The space has no activity. Yeah. yeah. Then uh, how? Uh, being in the space, how all units are energized, that is one part. And the second part is, is there any uh, other units uh, being, uh, uh, because other units are influenced on uh, energizing me out, uh, other than space, or only space is, being in the space, uh, uh, my self is energized. 
let me uh, clarify, you know. One thing that you said was that every unit is energized by space. We are not saying that. We are saying that every unit is energized in space. Ah, yeah. By and in is very different words, you know, different meaning. Yes, yes. So if you observe this distance, the reality, there are two types of reality. One is the unit, the other is the space. And we have units in space. Yes. Okay. Yes, Bayer. So we have units in space. And this is something which you can which we can observe. Right. Yes. 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 This is one observation. Second observation is that when we observe the units, we see that they are activities. So anything you observe, you'll find that it is an activity. Like if you observe the self, it is an activity. Yes. If you observe the body, that is also an activity. Right? Yes. You observe a bird, it is an activity. So all these are activities. Right? The tree, yes. plant, all are activities. So all these units that we see, they are activity. Yes. When we look at the space, it is no activity. Yes. Yes. So these things, you know, step by step, you can see. Then when we observe, we find that these units have a limited shape, limited size. Right? Yes. Space is all spread. You know. Yes, unlimited. So it is not having a limited size. Yes. So it has no shape in that sense. So it is said to be all spread, you know, all pervading. Yes, me. So two things we can see. Units are activity. Space is no activity. Yes. In fact, there also we have to be careful. You are saying space has no activity. Right? Yes. What we are saying is space is not an activity. Achha. Okay. I can explain you the difference. When yes. you are saying space is no activity, you are making a statement about the space. Yes. When you are saying space has no activity, then you are not making a statement only about the space. You are yes. making a statement about the space and the units in space. Yes. Because units are in space and they are activity. Yes. So you cannot say that space <laughs> has no activity. It has activity going on in space. But space itself is not an activity. Oh. oh, so we have to be careful, you know, when we are handling this space. Yes. But, uh, oh. the, yeah. Yeah. Please. The energizing process uh, is completely uh, based on the self only, or other self with the other I'm, self I'm, also. Yeah. I'm coming to that. Yes. Yes. So one thing is that these units are there <coughs> in space and they are activities in space. Okay. Yes. So this is one observation. The units are there, space is there, units are in space, units yes. are activity in space, while space itself is not an activity. Yes. Now, this is the absolute state that units are in space and they are activity in space. So, this is one observation that we have to make. Second observation is that if you look at one unit and the other unit, 
we see that these units are related to each other through space because space is there in between so the relationship has to be there through the space okay so one unit is related to another unit through space and out of this relationship there is an effect of one unit over the another unit okay is that clear are you able to hear me yes sir as in university yes, you yes. got a minute yes. i am able to hear yeah, able to yes, yes. And so, one more question, which I'm trying to say. No, no, let me let me first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I yeah. I cannot run, you know, with your question. I have to yeah. take time, you know, and. Yeah, yes, but yeah, I understand. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, okay. So, <laughs> units are related to each other through space, and out yes. of that relationship, there is an effect of one unit over the another unit. Yes. Okay. Yes. So there are two things. One is a unit is in space, and it is an activity in space. Okay. Yes. So this is one state, and this state is what we are calling as an absolute state of this unit. Yes. Then second thing is that this unit is being affected by other units. Okay. This is relative state of the unit. Yeah. And we need to understand both of them. Yeah. Okay. Unfortunately, we are only focusing on the second one, the yes. relative state. Yes. And we have no idea about the absolute state of it. Yeah. Yes. So the whole science today. Number one, it is dealing only with the material world, not with the world of consciousness. And number two, it is only dealing with the relative, you know, status of one unit with respect to another unit. But there is a, that is absolute state also of the unit in relation to space that is not very clear. Yes. So what when we are talking about coexistence, we are talking about both. We are saying that these units are in space. They are activities in space. And this is the absolute state of that unit. And that we need to understand. And that yes. can be understood by the pure observer by direct observation. Yes. So that is where we have to move. Okay. So in exercise three, we will try to work on this. That we, from the state of the pure observer, we'll try to observe the units. We'll try to observe the space. We we'll try to observe the units in space, right? And there we will be able to see the absolute state of the unit. And this unit unit includes all. It includes the self, the consciousness. It includes the material units, right? It includes yeah. the small units and the big unit and bigger units and you know, all that. So all that has to be seen at two level. One is at the level of absolute, you know, uh, unit yes. being in space. And second is units being in relationship with other units and therefore having getting affected by other units. Yes. Yeah. So this is my response to your question. So now you can ask further questions. Yes. Yeah. yeah. This uh, only small... Uh, oh. 
little bit time i'll take uh, uh, imagination my imagination uh, it involves uh, thoughts uh, desires and expectations so uh, is it uh, these suppose i have some feelings desires then uh, uh, the thoughts and uh, uh, expectations also overlapping with that or it is happening in sequence uh, i feel uh, some overlap is there uh, how i get no, only no. Uh, just repeat your question again yeah in the in my imagination uh, yeah. thoughts desires and expectations running mm. Uh, sometimes uh, I feel uh, it is running simultaneously. Mm. Uh, yeah, that is some overlapping. Means uh, if I feel uh, I am I am a as an observer, I, I want to observe my feelings. Then some thoughts are running uh, and uh, uh, coming uh, simultaneously coming, and uh, my expectations also sometimes uh, simultaneously. I have some expectations uh, instead of observing. Uh, only feelings. So is that overlap? Is always there or uh, something to be uh, not uh, properly? I have observed or something. They they may exist simultaneous and mostly they are there simultaneously. Okay. Okay. But it is for us to decide which particular activity I am going to focus to. So this pure observer from where we are trying to see things, the lower activities, has this capacity to decide as to which activity I am trying to see or which I, activity I have to see. And with that decision, it can see that particular activity. For example, if you look at your status before starting this exercise one and two, mostly you were paying attention to your sensations, right? Sensation yes. from the body. Yes. So sensation were there and these feelings were also there. The thoughts were also there. Isn't it? Yes. Simultaneously. Yes. Yes. But you had decided not to pay attention to these feelings, these thoughts. Now you decided yes. to pay attention to the thoughts and you are able yes. to see the thought. Yes. Yes. So it is not that when you are studying or uh, reading sensation, the thoughts were not there. They were there simultaneously. Yes. But that is not a matter of worry. Oh. Ultimately, I have to take the decision where to pay attention. Oh. And I made the decision that I have to pay attention to the sensation because they are important. Yes. I did not pay attention to the feelings and thoughts because I didn't know that it is there or I didn't think that it is important. Yeah. I get that. Uh, very nice. Uh, yeah. Thank you very much uh, for your nice explanation. I will be able to get clearly. Yes, yes. Yes, thank you. How resource persons are able to answer all questions? That is not true. We are not able to answer all questions. <laughs> <laughs> whatever we have been able to observe understand for that we are responding what we are not able to observe and understand we are saying that we have to explore then we are talking largely about the process not about you know the answers to the questions so there are two things one is the process of observation of the reality. The other is giving description about the reality. So if you look at these two, um, this thing, there are two different types of, you know, uh, response. Both of them are important. So we are giving two types of description. One is about the process through which we can see things. Second is the description about the reality that we have been able to see or not able to see. So answers, you know, 
the ultimate expectation is that both this description about the process and the reality has to be given. But wherever the resource person is able to see things you know, through this process, they are describing the reality also. Otherwise, they are describing the process. But it is useful. Even getting the process is useful because then each one of us has to work on that. So the major thing that is being um, responded to is every time there is an issue, there is a problem, we are trying to trace the process by which you can decide to pay attention to that reality. Then you pay attention, you observe the reality. And when you re observe the reality, you understand the reality. And when you understand the reality, the problem is solved. Because then you are able to recognize your relationship with that reality and you know how to fulfill it. Okay. So your problem is solved. So instead of problem, now you have solution. And there also you can see that first thing to understand is your own self. When you understand your own self, majority of the problems are solved. That is interesting. Then there are issues related to your relationship with other units. So you start paying attention to that. And when you understand the other unit also, then these two together, understanding myself and understanding the other. With these two understanding together, I can now recognize my relationship with the other and I can decide how to fulfill that relationship. So when I realize that and I work out the details of how to fulfill relationship, that is the solution. That is the solution with which now I can work. Previously, I was not able to see what to do. That was the problem. Now I am able to see my relationship with the other and how I can fulfill that relationship. But in order to see this, I need at the background understanding my own self and understanding the other unit. So if you look at the response that the resource persons are giving, it is largely the response regarding the process by which you can see. And if some description resource person is able to see about that reality, then they are also giving the description depending upon how much of and what type of descriptions are useful uh, at this you know, uh, juncture, depending upon your question, depending upon your state of being. So three things, their own state of being, your state of being, and presently your question, you know, demands for certain level of description. So that description is given. But then in real terms, if you see, not all the questions are answered. In terms of giving both the process and the description. Mostly we are giving the process and leaving it to you to work out for yourself. Sometimes we are giving some description. Isn't it? Ah, yes, Baya. Yeah. yeah, the whole exercise one and two is not giving you the descriptions about the reality. They are giving description about the process. And through this process, you see the reality yourself. Isn't it? Ah, yes. Uh, if that is so, uh, when students are qu asking questions, and if I am not getting the answer immediately, so what response I should give? Simple. I am a co-explorer. So this is one reality which I am myself exploring. And I am exploring it with you. So let us explore together. I am not able to see as it is. 
but i certainly see that it is an important reality and i also feel that i have the capacity to see and each one of us has the capacity to see the reality by way of observing it so let us observe together let us work on it together so many times we have been saying you know that when you are teaching this course don't start preaching this course you have to be a co-explorer so your self has to explore you have to explore it and you have to help the students also to explore that is why we are using the word facilitator so we are facilitating each other to explore i have done some exploration i am able to see certain things okay i am able to see some process i am sharing it with you but my process of exploration is also ongoing i want to help you to initiate this process right when your process is initiated and my process is working together then together we can work and help each other facilitate each other so we are co explorer and we are facilitator to each other so this is the sense in which the resource person who are sharing this with you are also working so they are not giving answer to all question they are exploring themselves and they are sharing it with you so that we can explore together uh will not the student uh, think that uh, okay uh, my sir himself does not know he himself is unable to find out uh, so what i can find out uh, let me put a stop so some students may think this way no yeah but when i am making this statement that i am in the process of exploration right then there is no problem when i am trying to pose that i know everything and then i am not able to answer then there is problem isn't it okay like your father does not know everything right you don't say that okay i will not accept you as my father because you don't know you know you are not able to see everything isn't it yes so guide is not one who is who has all the answers the guide is one who is willing to help you to move forward in the direction in which you want to move it is good that you know if you know everything but if you don't know everything you know something and you don't know something and you are in the process of exploration it is good to tell that to the student right rather than posing that yes you know everything and you know you have solution to everything that will create a worse condition isn't it yes yes so a uh, last question uh, for example yeah. if i am saying that i am not giving answer to all your question or i don't have answer to all your question in terms of both the process and the description of the reality then it is not a problem you know if still what i am saying is making sense to you you will pay attention to it you will not discard me isn't it yes bhai yeah. shall i ask the last question uh yeah you can ask 
but I I need five minutes to sum up before I um, the Hindi session starts. So you can ask me the question. If it is a short answer, I'll give it. Yes. Okay. Uh, we are having uh, two types of illnesses. One is uh, physical illnesses, and uh, another one is uh, mental illnesses. Yes. Uh, the the physical illnesses like uh, you know rheumatoid diabetes or problem these are for everybody mental diseases like anxiety disorders are for everybody be the disruptive and dissocial disorders phobias etc now we say that uh, sanskars are the basis of even these diseases also so uh, everybody has got something or other so how uh, we can uh, uh, help ourselves and others uh, in order to get away from these diseases or in order not to get these diseases on the basis of sanskars. So how can we find out those sanskars and how can we get rid of that? Yeah, this is what we are doing in exercise one. In exercise one, we are directly looking at our sanskar and we are evaluating them, okay. And by the in the process of observing in the uh, sanskar and evaluating them from the pure observer, this purification starts taking place. So let me uh, tell what we are doing in exercise one, you know, and then we'll talk about exercise two also. See what is happening. And this is what I wanted to sum up, you know. So I'll I'll do this summing up and that will respond to your question also. <laughs> so if you look at this step exercise one, what we are doing is we are observing the self by the self. Okay. In step one, when we are saying be aware, observe your imagination at this moment. That is desire, feeling, thought, expectation, and don't react, no reaction. These three things, being aware, one, observing your imagination, two, and no reaction, three. If you look at these three things, that is, you are being aware and observing without reaction, you are already at the place of your observer. Otherwise, you are likely to react. So this is what we are doing right in the first step. It takes time. You become aware. You observe your imagination. You evaluate your imagination, your desire, thought. And sometimes you are able to do it without reacting. Sometimes you react. So you are not reacting when you are looking at it from the place of pure observer, the highest activity of the self. When you forget and you come down to the lower level, that is the level of sanskar, then you start reacting. If something favorable is there, you want it to continue. If something unfavorable is there, right, something you don't have the acceptance acceptance for, then you want to remove it. Right? So that reaction comes in. The reaction comes in from where? Sanskar. So if you have come down to the level of Sanskar, you are in trouble. You are reacting. Then you suddenly recall that, oh, I have, you know, I have started reacting and I don't have to react. Now, this recalling and this awareness takes you again to the pure observer. So then you are observing it, evaluating it, and not reacting. So this is what is happening in step one. Now, with this step one, you are observing the imagination, the desire, thought, and expectation, particularly the desire. And then you are evaluating it whether it is naturally acceptable to you, not naturally acceptable to you, whether it is leading to a state of harmony and happiness or otherwise. So two and three is basically trying to evaluate your desire. OK. 
okay in particular imagination in general and evaluate this from the place of pure observer so there you can see which desire is naturally acceptable which feeling is naturally acceptable and which feeling is not naturally acceptable which feeling leads to a state of harmony which feeling leads to a state of disharmony which feeling leads to happiness which feeling leads to this unhappiness so step 2 and 3 we are looking at imagination the feeling and evaluating it and in the process it is getting purified but all this you are doing from the level of pure observer then step 4 and 5 basically trying to help you to draw your attention towards your sanskar sanskar which are deciding your feelings your thought so when we are saying that these feelings are decided by our own self right we see that they are step 4 we are saying that we are deciding it step 5 we are saying that we are deciding it on the basis of our sanskar basis of our preconditioning our assumption right these assumptions may be based on my right understanding or they may be just you know accepted without understanding them so 4 and 5 is basically trying to become aware of the sanskar the preconditioning the assumption the acceptances that is what is called sanskar on the basis of that we are deciding for the feeling so we keep taking these examples that if we have a sanskar that there is a struggle for survival right and survival of the fittest if we have acceptance for this then anybody we see we start with a feeling of opposition so this feeling of opposition for the other person is born out of my acceptance that there is a struggle in this existence in this nature and everybody is trying to deny everybody else so there we are trying to look at the sanskar in step 4 and 5 and trying to evaluate it right then step 6 we are trying to find out which feelings and which sanskar are natural for us right for us which feeling which sanskar are not natural and not right for us so we find that the feeling which are in accordance with the feeling of relationship harmony and coexistence they are the right feelings because they are naturally acceptable any feeling in opposition to this relationship harmony and coexistence is not naturally acceptable similarly the existence is by way of relationship harmony and coexistence therefore any sanskar which is in line with relationship harmony and coexistence they are the right sanskar otherwise they are not the right sanskar so both the feeling the thought and the sanskar my preconditionings or my assumptions or my acceptances have to be evaluated by the pure observer first they have to be seen then they have to be observed uh, they have to be evaluated by the pure observer whether they are in line with relationship harmony and coexistence or not if we do that they will get start getting purified so if i am doing it at this moment at least at this moment i can purify my sanskar and my feelings if i am doing it next moment i can do that purification and it will keep happening if i am aware every moment if i am looking at this sanskar and the feeling every moment and if i am evaluating them every moment every moment i can keep purifying it 
so we have the right sanskar active at this moment we have the right feeling and therefore we are in a state of harmony and happiness within at this moment and if i continue this every moment every moment the purification will take place every moment i will be in a state of harmony and happiness that is what is being done in step 7 so this exercise one in these seven steps includes the answer to this question of how i purify my sanskar how i purify my sanskar how i purify my feeling how i purify, purify my thought that is what we are doing in exercise one in all these seven steps so this is what we are doing in exercise 1 with this exercise 1 going on every moment so every moment i am in a state of pure observer from there we are now looking at things every moment we are looking down you know at the lower activities of the self that is looking at the feelings the thoughts the imagination evaluating it looking at the sanskar at this moment which is active and evaluating it and not reacting to it just observing seeing it and evaluating it that itself lead to the process of self purification purification of the feelings thoughts the imagination then the feeling purification of the sanskar and this we have to do every moment if we do this we are in a state of harmony and happiness because every moment i am able to ensure that i have the right sanskar right feeling and right thought so this is what is being done in exercise 1 along with this now if you look at the exercise 2 what it says is that while i am working with myself every moment okay sometime when if when i find that some you know it is important to interact with the world outside and this outside world can be your body or some other human being or some you know physiochemical units three things your body the physical facility the other human being these three things are outside it is not part of you so you are interacting with this unit whenever you consider that it is important to interact so for example when you feel that it is important to interact with the body body is a good instrument for me and i have to take care of that body i have that feeling of relationship for the body so out of that feeling of relationship for the body i decide to pay attention outside pay attention to the body right and i pay attention to the body and i transact some information with the body right as and when necessary so there are few important things which has to be observed number one this transaction with the world outside including the body is done out of the necessity and it is done for the time being exercise one is being done continuously every moment and in the process sometime i find it important to interact with the body and at that time i pay attention to the body right and i transact information with the body for the period i consider it important so for example if i think that it is important to nurture the body so i look at the body i read some sensation from the body and i conclude whether there is you know hunger or not and then i decide whether to feed something to the body or not and if i decide that something has to be fed to the body then i give some instruction to the body you know to go to the kitchen take some food 
and put it in the mouth and all those. All this transaction of information with the body I'm doing by way of my consideration that it is important for me to interact at this moment or for this period of time. So this is done as per the need and for a specified period. Then I'm back again with my exercise one, with my, you know, paying attention to myself. In fact, you will see that you are working all the time with yourself. And along with working all the time with yourself, sometimes you are also paying attention to the world outside, including your body. And that is what we are trying to describe and work out in exercise two. So tomorrow I'll give, discuss some detail about that exercise to what we are doing. But that point that we are working continuously every moment with exercise one. And while working, sometime when important, we are also paying attention to the world outside. But when we are paying attention to the world outside, our work with ourselves will continue. That is not dropped. So this is what we are doing in exercise one. Tomorrow I'll take up this, you know, how you are working with exercise two while continuing to work with exercise one, which is what is intended you know, in exercise two. 